So, uh, hello there, everybody. Welcome to my presentation, a manifesto on why mayonnaise should be eradicated from the face of the earth. Just kidding. Sort of, mayonnaise should be eradicated from the face of the earth, but that's not really the presentation. Uh, presentation is campus scenics and stock, how and why. And my name is Matt Kishore. My uh, job title is senior university photographer at the University of Notre Dame. Uh, both my Twitter and Instagram are at Matt Kishore. And just a little quick history about me. I've been a UPA member for 11, oh, not quite 11 years, joined in 2009. First symposium was Jamestown. Um, and I've been around Notre Dame for 30 years almost to the day. Uh, from 1990 to 94, I was a student here and I worked on the yearbook and that's kind of where I got my initial on the job training. Um, they had a pretty good collection of cameras, all the film for free and a dark room and I availed myself of all of those. Uh, right after, while I was still a student actually, I started doing freelance work for the University Magazine and some of the publications that later grew into the department I worked for as an employee. So from 1993 to 2007, I was a freelance contractor for Notre Dame. Uh, that's me at a basketball game in 1995. That's, a, that's an F4 and an F5 hardwired to strobes there in front of me. So that uh, speaks to its era. And then uh, in 2007, they made me an employee and uh, I, I still am at the moment. Uh, so fair warning, I'm also a stat nerd. You're gonna get a lot of numbers, a lot of stats. Um, it's just what I do. Our website for my department is photos.nd.edu. This is what it looks like. Feel free to poke around. Um, you can see how we name things, some of the keywords we use. If you have any questions on that, uh, you can ask me offline. Um, be curious to, to hear what you have to say, but uh, we're not gonna be dealing with any of that because Jaron and, and Ken already kind of dealt with that stuff. But uh, like most university photographers, I do my share of the day-to-day -day headshots, commencements, group shots, some sports, um, but you know, a real bread and butter item for, for me and for my department, uh, campus scenics. And you know, when you have a campus like Notre Dame, obviously it's a scenic place and they kind of tee it up for me, but uh, it's not quite as easy as it sounds. Um, campus scenics have been made into books. They get made into prints. We do a pretty good print sales business through our uh, website. Uh, it's all over the social media. And so I'm going to talk a little bit about how I go about getting those. Um, it helps that Northern Indiana, or Notre Dame is, has four seasons, winter, spring, summer, fall. Uh, we have all the weather, uh, sometimes on the same day. Uh, yesterday it snowed, today it's sunny. Uh, and a golden dome, doesn't hurt. So I uh, shot that on Christmas morning 2017, I think. So uh, when, they, when they plop a golden dome on your campus, it's kind of Christmas every day. They, they kind of, like I said, they kind of tee it up for me. Uh, some examples of just what our campus looks like. And so we just, you know, we schedule the rainbows, the lightning, we schedule Christmas, and it's all good. No, would that it were that easy. Um, this is a, an example of, you know, you point, a, you point a DSLR at the Golden Dome, you're going to get a pretty picture. Um, but the more elusive stuff is when you have Golden Dome, a DSLR, and what I call magic. And those who know me well know that I use a phrase called chasing the magic when I'm, I'm looking for scenics. What's this? A stuffy office meeting? Well, maybe it's time for a little office magic. What's office magic? What's office magic? I'm glad you asked. What's this? Magic is what I call the unschedulable confluence of light season, weather, and subject. And how do I chase the magic? Well, I have one advantage that not everyone has, but I'm lucky to have myself proximity. This is the campus of the University of Notre Dame. 
and my house is there. So when I'm sitting at home and I see some storms rolling in, if it looks promising, I'm less than five minutes away from being on campus. That helps a ton. Sun rises, you wake up, on my way to make coffee, look out the window. Mm, is it worth going over to campus? Yeah. And, and I can be there six in the morning, five in the morning, whenever sunrise happens to be. Uh, rainbows, they last five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 if you're really, really lucky. I've got, if it lasts five minutes, I can get to campus and get a rainbow before it's gone. The other thing, it takes a certain passion and a motivation for the job. Some might call it obsession, but nevertheless, it means thinking about making a campus photo basically every waking minute of the day. Like I said, I'm waking up in the morning, looking out the window, thinking, should I go to campus? Uh, taking my daughter up to, to do bedtime, looking out the window going, is the moon coming up? Uh, just mowing the lawn, looking at the clouds going, should I stop mowing the lawn? Just all the time, never not thinking about it. One of my favorite quotes is from Thomas Edison, everything comes to him who hustles while he waits. So like I said, mowing the lawn, I'm not working, but I'm working. I'm hustling while I wait. Uh, this is a, a great story I like to tell that's an example of that. Um, about 2014 or 15, uh, they tore down a big building just north of my house, an old high school. Uh, and when they removed the building, it opened up all sorts of new scenic vistas to see the dome. And I would go up to this, this empty patch of land and ride bikes with my daughter or run around or walk the dog or just take a morning walk. And, and I would look at the dome through the trees and think to myself, well, there's not a picture right now, but boy, if there's ever a rainbow, that'd be a great spot to shoot with a long lens and make the rainbow look really huge. And every time I would go up there for two, three years, I'm sort of rehearsing what would I do if I get the opportunity to take advantage of this vista. And then in September, 2018, a rainbow appears and I don't even have to go to campus. I just have to walk 500 feet north of my house. And this picture that I've been ready for for two plus years is right there. Or uh, a sunrise. There was last summer, two summers ago, I think there were some wildfires in the Western US that were making the sunrises in Northern Indiana particularly unique. Uh, and, and one morning I'm out for my morning walk with my coffee and my podcast and I notice the sun's lining up with the dome real nice. And I think to myself, all right, well, tomorrow morning I'm gonna go out with my coffee, my podcast and a 600 millimeter lens. Um, this is another story of sort of always thinking and being ready to make a picture. Uh, we have a college across the street from Notre Dame who on Labor Day weekend decided to have a welcome back to school party with fireworks. And as a quick aside, I'm often asked, do I have any secret spots on campus where I shoot scenics? And for the most part, the answer is no, with one exception, which by my screen to there. Uh, the building in which our photo studio is housed is 11 stories tall, and there's a conference room on the 11th floor that's always open. And these photos are from a blog post that I did for the UPA blog on uh, reviewing the uh, parasail umbrellas that are on the right-hand picture. But you can see through the window that it has a pretty killer view of, the, of, our, of our main building and our, and our basilica. And so I, that's a place that is available to me anytime I want, unless they're having a meeting there, of course, but you know, on nights, weekends, it's gonna be open. And that's the one place that I have that I can go to that the general public can't. So that's the one exception to, do I have a secret spot? Yeah, it's this. So referencing back to the fireworks, uh, when I saw where they were gonna do the fireworks, um, oh, this is an example of a picture that I can make through that window. You put the camera right up against the window. The glass isn't perfect, but it's adequate if you adequately shade the camera. So I saw where they're gonna do the fireworks, which is about here where the red X is. Our main building is where the second red X is. And our 11 story tall building is where the third red X is. And I'm looking at that kind of doing the mental math thinking, ah, that might line up. But I didn't really wanna spend 
two hours sitting in this 11th floor conference room on Labor Day weekend to find out that I guessed wrong. Uh, so I, I put a camera on a tripod up against the window, put a little shade around it to keep the reflections down, put it on a timer, made a guess at an exposure in an interval, set the timer to go for about two hours, knowing I'd have, you know, 90% of nothing, but I might have one or two fireworks photos. Went back home, enjoyed my evening with my family. Several hours later, checked back in on the camera, boom. So proximity, OCD like obsession or making a picture. And, uh, you know, 10 minutes of work was worth the chance of not having a picture. So, all that said, I'm, I'm sort of telling you a story about sort of being an obsessive nut job and going to campus on weekends and nights and holidays and odd hours and sunrises and sort of not working in business hours making these pictures, but that's not true. I'm also thinking about scenics during business hours and making them too. Uh, the two keys to that, for me anyway, I walk everywhere on campus, I don't drive, and I always have a camera ready, not in a bag or a case. So again, told you I'm stat nerd. This is uh, from my, my Garmin smartwatch. This is my step counter. Uh, that's 140 miles for the month of August, walked. And you know, when you break that down into, oh, I guess let me, one, <laughs> two advantages to walking. First is, uh, you park your car in a legal spot, you don't get tickets. Second is, eh, I'm a little more fit than I would be if I didn't walk. Um, but yeah, stat nerd, so what's the average walking speed? 3.1 miles an hour. So I can tell you from my Garmin smartwatch that I'm eight to 12 hours a week of walking. And every time I'm walking, I'm looking for scenics. Told you I was a stat nerd. So, you know, there's an example of, of pictures made just while I'm walking between jobs during business hours, because, hey, the light's nice. And well, I could walk this way to my next job, or if I walk around this building, I'll have a nice view of one of our quads. Or if I just hop into this building, I've got 10 minutes to go upstairs and shoot out their second story window. What the heck? The library looks nice today, clouds are nice. I have five minutes to stop and make a picture, sure. Uh, the other key to making scenics is you need support. Uh, and, and I have it, luckily, from both the office and home. So what do I mean about support from the office? Uh, this is 2014. I think this was a best in show at the annual photo contest in 2014 at the symposium. Um, this is a late winter, early spring snow where after it's done coating everything in this white, sort of gloriousness, the sun comes out. And it, this happens like once every five years. And I was scheduled to do some lab photos that day. And I called the office and said, let's call the lab and tell them I'm going to be late because the lab will look the same an hour from now or tomorrow or next week. But the campus will not look the same an hour from now or tomorrow or next week. I need to take advantage of what God just put in front of me. And everyone at the office was cool with that. And uh, so I had support there. Um, another story I like to tell is my wife is 100% behind what I'm doing. So if I need to leave the lawn half mode, or if we need to suddenly alter our dinner plans, or if I need to, you know, tag out of bedtime with our daughter, she's totally cool with it. And in fact, she even gives me heads up uh, when there's some photo opportunities. So this is some random day at 9.05 a.m. when I'm down in the basement, in our basement photo studio doing headshots. And, and it's, it's uh, you know, Rainbows usually happen in the east because the sun is going down in the west. And on this day, there was a rainbow in the west as the sun was coming up in the east. And she saw it at home and gave me a text. And I'm down doing headshots. And the person I'm, I'm photographing, they're, they're going through their selection and, and looking at their, uh, reviewing their options. And I get this text and I say to the person, hey, uh, wait right here. I'll be right back. And I just grab the closest camera to me and I get in the elevator, go up to that 11th floor room that I know of. Boom, that's waiting for me. And then 90 seconds later, it's gone. So my wife with the assist. So now we'll pause. Anyone, anyone? And take some questions.
All right, first Matt, um, what is your uh, go-to walking around camera lens combo that you, you, you like to have with you at all times ready to go? Depends, uh, probably, probably a 24 to 70 is probably the, the most likely candidate. And then a 7200 would be the next most likely candidate. Um, it just depends. And sometimes it just always have something and then make a picture with something. So if it just happened that I had a 300 F4, well, I'll figure out a way to make a picture with a 300 F4, but just don't have the camera buried in the bag. Uh, just have something ready and, and, you know, and make something work. So that's kind of, you know, I like to say I'm, I'll MacGyver it. Um, but 24 to 70 would be the likeliest candidate. Good. Uh, Glenn Carpenter is asking, do you use a polarizer? Nope, too lazy. And then I know the feeling. Uh, from Joshua, do you use any special filters at all? Tiffin Black Pro Mist or anything like that? No. Um, I'll take advantage of uh, some of the options available in Adobe Camera Raw as far as gradient. If, if I feel it's, it's going to help or if I feel it's necessary. Um, but... Uh, no, no filters at all. Beth's asking, what opportunities and challenges for Scenics have come with the empty COVID campus? Uh, more than you think. Um, uh, you'll see one of those at the end of the presentation. Uh, I'll just, I'll drop that little tease. But uh, I decided when I realized campus was going to close, I just gave myself the assignment of uh, a photo a day, every day, rain or shine, I'm going to do something both to keep myself sane and to, to keep our campus community connected. Um, uh, I just sort of accidentally stumbled into the fact that there seems to, I seem to have a good response on, on social media, Twitter specifically is where most of my Notre Dame, all my Notre Dame photos go. Um, and people, alums, students, uh, old classmates of mine, they really, uh, respond to uh, what I post on, on Twitter. So I came up with the photo a day project, uh, again, both for myself and, and to keep the campus community connected to Notre Dame. And it's been both a challenge to have a photo every day, uh, whether it's cloudy, sunny, um, and it's been uh, kind of fun. And uh, like I said, you'll see one of those at the end. Good. Um, and from Nate Edwards, how do you overcome justifying reasons not to go take a photo on campus? How do you stay motivated? That whole obsession thing. Um, and and, and I'll, the next section is the why. And, and I'll, I'll talk a little bit about that. So there's, but yeah, yeah so stand by. Okay. Uh, from Sid, uh, what's the most rewarding about your work being at your own um, What's the most rewarding thing about working at your alma mater and the biggest challenge of your connection? Hmm. Well, uh, I wouldn't say that there's a challenge. Uh, if anything, working at my alma mater is an advantage because I really understand what a Notre Dame audience thinks. And there are certain things, I don't have a photo to, to show you, but there, I, I one day I came across some sidewalk graffiti that was sort of making a, an inside Notre Dame joke about our dining halls. We have two dining halls on campus and, and which dining hall you prefer is, is you know, very much a, a thing. Um, and, and, you know, so I tweet a photo of this sort of inside joke about a dining hall. And, you know, I know that's going to resonate with the audience that I'm speaking to. Um, and, you know, if I hadn't been an alum at Notre Dame, I probably wouldn't get that. So being an alum is an advantage. Uh, I wouldn't say it creates any challenges. Um, what was the other part of the question? Uh, basically that, you know, I, but I think you addressed it, you know, that institutional knowledge really does help. And Huge. knowing all the nooks and crannies really does help a lot. Um, one more question from Randy. Do you feel sometimes after being at the same place for so long, you stop seeing certain things or you miss things? Um, well, again, I'm going to get a little bit into that in the why. Um, possibly, and, uh, but I hope not. Again, that whole obsession thing. And then from Fred, are you ever going to tire of shooting the dome? 
your audience always loves the shot. How do you keep excited? So the same kind of question. Uh, yeah, that's, that's, we're going to go into a little bit of that. And, and sort of repetition is something that, that I, I struggle with, you know, I remember every photo I've ever made. I was like, oh, I can't shoot that. I shot that photo in 2005. Why would I want to shoot that again? Well, eh, you know, I remember that I shot it in 2005, but most people don't. Um, so I'm, I'm going to get to that in, uh, in just a bit. So Matt, I think that's a good uh, opportunity for us to jump to the next section and people go ahead and keep on asking those questions in the, in the chat box and we'll come back to it. So this is uh, Campus Scenics and Stock, how and why. Now we're into the why. Um, so here's five big reasons why. Um, there's a financial element to it. Uh, there's a time savings element to it. Our university goals factor into it. Awards and applause factor into it because I say to any photographer who says, I don't care about awards, <coughs> liar. Um, and then there's the personal challenge as people have alluded to about how do I shoot the same place for 30 years and keep challenging myself and keep coming up with something that I haven't done 15 times before. And that's a bar I like to set for myself that I aim for every day, basically. Um, so the first one of those is the financial part of it. And our department is set up as a cost recovery unit. So we have a financial obligation we have to hit and Campus Scenics and stock uh, are 40%, give or take, of our revenue every year. So you, you can't have cost recovery without it, uh, if you're serious about hitting those numbers. So. Um, uh, this presentation isn't about cost recovery or its merits or lack thereof. So we're just going to kind of leave it at that and feel free to contact me offline if you want more on that. But it's a big, Campus Scenics and Stock are, are a big part of the financial pie. Um, so people often ask me, what's your favorite photo you've ever taken? And my sort of go-to answer for that is, I hope I haven't taken it yet. But I can say, absolutely, Positively, the thing I am the most proud of in 13 years of being an employee of Notre Dame is setting up our photo site. Uh, was one of one of the first. I'm not sure if the first, but if it wasn't the first, I was the third university to get a photo shelter account in 2007, um, when photo shelter itself was still pretty new, uh, and and started that pretty much day one as an employee. I had a personal photo shelter account, and when I came to Notre Dame, I thought, well, this, this works. I looked at a couple of the others. I think Digital Railroad was one I remember looking at. And I can't remember. Uh, I think I looked even at Flickr, and I don't know if I'm familiar with photo shelter. I know it works well. I'm going to go with photo shelter. And uh, that is the best decision I ever made, and the thing I am the most proud of uh, in 13 years. And if somebody gave you a list of criteria, that they needed in a photo website. It would sound impossible if they just listed out the things that it needed to do. It needs to be a portal to the entire campus. It needs to be a retail store to the public. It needs to be open 24 seven, 365. It needs to have no full-time employees dedicated to maintaining it. And it needs to pay for itself. Those things in combo sound nearly impossible, but that's exactly what photos.nd.edu does. Uh, we use the feature uh, called the trusted client download. So if you're a campus user and you email us, uh, we'll set up your email to have access to download anything you can find on photos.nd.edu. Self-search, self-serve. Uh, and sales, even in the, basically the, the world's been closed for the last month, we still had photo sales. And you know, it takes a click of a mouse. Um, fulfillment's automated. Um, but even if you aren't cost recovery, even if you have no interest in selling prints, even if the financials aren't part of your obligation as a university photographer, the time savings of self-search, self-serve are priceless. Everyone understands that the less time you're, doing, you're spending answering emails is more time you can be doing, more time you can be spending doing photos or something else that's much less tedious than doing emails. So uh, 
stat nerd time again. Uh, Photo Shelter keeps 90 days worth of download records. And uh, 90 days, when I downloaded, when I took this screenshot last week, 15,000 downloads in 90 days. So 5,000 downloads a month that we have to do practically nothing uh, to deal with. And uh, when you look at this record, if people aren't familiar with, with what the back end of Photo Shelter looks like, um, Every time you see a name in the main file, that's somebody who went into our archive and browsed and downloaded something on their own. If you see an NA, that means uh, it was a, a commission shoot that we sent them a gallery and they're downloading something they commissioned and paid for. And, and um, so that would, that would be a separate transaction. But every name is what I would call a transaction. And so in this page, that was from last week. And then when I, re when I was looking at it again in preparation for this presentation, I realized that this page represents uh, basically one hour of, of normal business days. April 10th was a holiday for, for Notre Dame, uh, Good Friday. So Notre Dame uh, takes that as a holiday every year. Um, so there were one, two, three, four, five, six transactions represented on this screenshot of maybe 30, six transactions. If every one of those transactions had to be an email, Five minutes an email. Hey, I need the uh, need this picture. Maybe they have specific sh shot list they need. Maybe they're asking, Hey, do you have a picture of the dome in winter I could look at? And then you have to do a little curating for them. That could be a 15 minute email. But even if it's five minutes an email, you extrapolate this out into a business day when it could be 30 transactions in a business day. And you keep doing the math and the self search self serve saves credibly in my estimation a full week's worth of not answering emails and not manually fulfilling requests. So even if you have zero financial interest in selling prints or books or downloads or licensing, uh, I think everyone can take an interest in, in saving some time. So another motivation for the campus Phoenix and stock is our university goals that they're, they're public on the web. This is our strategic plan page and they, they, they name our, our five big university goals, Catholic character, undergraduate education, research and scholarship, stewardship and external engagement. I'm not quite so sure on what stewardship and external engagement look like, but Catholic undergraduate and research, I'm pretty, I've got a pretty good sense of what that looks like. And so those things are always on my mind. I'm walking around campus, I'm thinking Catholic undergraduate research, um, and you're thinking, well, how can you keep all these things in your head all the time? Are you that much of a nerd? Well, A, yes, but B, our division vice president pointed out not long ago that the first letter of all of these goals make a fun little acronym, CURSE, C-U-R-S-E. So uh, that's a fun way to remember it. Uh, and so, yeah, it's in my brain all the time. And so I'm at a lecture in a room that has a crucifix on the wall, as most rooms do at Notre Dame, and this sunbeam comes through the room well that that that, that guy at the podium is going to be there three minutes from now i'm just going to walk over here and make this photo real quick nothing says catholic like a crucifix right catholic uh and and this is a student a student affairs request to uh, photograph uh some of our students uh las posadas is a uh, christmas tradition of latin american origin um you know this is about students and dorm life and that sort of thing but you know while they're doing this Photograph a candle against a Notre Dame sweatshirt. That could be uh, all sorts of things that speak to sort of the spiritual life or a prayerful moment or a moment of reflection. Um, the Catholic character. Uh, at a mass, the Our Father, Catholic. Uh, this is undergraduate. So the undergraduate life is huge at Notre Dame, on campus, living on campus. Um, and I just pause real quick and, and, and acknowledge that we're a private school our obligations with regard to releases. Um, we have a great deal of flexibility in whether we do or don't. Uh, in 30 years, I am not aware of any instance where someone I photographed in a candid way has come back with a problem. Uh, so, you know, fingers crossed, cross fingers and common sense. We seem to be doing okay as far as when we do and don't get releases. So, you know, just walking around campus. This is again, I'm walking, I have my camera ready. Uh, these students are having a good time throwing the football. They, I didn't even break stride and I just took a quick picture. 
kept on trucking. Um, this is a case where I, I, I talked to these students before I made their picture, but again, just walking from point A to point B, hey, it looks like a pretty nice day. Let's make a picture on the way. Um, when it comes to sports, you know, I'm always thinking of the student section. What, what's it like to be a student at the football game? And, and you know, this, this photo is going to be usable until they expand the stadium again. So, so long as the stadium looks like that, they can use this photo. Uh, football game, touchdown. Okay, great. Get the celebration, but now turn around and get the students celebrating. And here's a, a fun story of, of, you know, where I'm always thinking about sort of the undergraduate, you know, the, the university goals, and again, the undergraduate experience part. Uh, our, one of our dining halls has, a, has an event space uh, on the upper floor, and so I'm, I'm booked to photograph a lecture, and it's like most lectures, it's half full and not really visual. Um, this lecture is going to be usable to the, the department that booked it, and that's about it. Uh, so, you know, I've, I've got my lecture photos in the can. I'm leaving the dining hall, and oh, hey, oh, that, the light in that dining room is really nice, and hey, those students, it's, it's, they're not heads in their phone, they're engaged with each other. And uh, if you went to Notre Dame, you know, you remember doing that. That's a very, those, those chairs and that table, that hasn't changed in 75 years. You know, everybody who's been in that dining hall, sat in those chairs, sat at those tables, that's gonna resonate with everybody who's ever eaten in that dining hall. And, and so I just made that picture my way out the door. And I made that in 2016, and here's our download record. It was downloaded just end of January. So they're still using it today. Uh, I was asked to photograph this faculty member. Um, and so you go in the lab and you make a photo of the faculty member. Uh, this, this speaks to the research part of the university goals. Um, it's a perfectly adequate photo of this faculty member and, and a grad student, but I had another shot in mind that after we were done with the, the photo that I was asked to do, I had, I had an idea that I'd been waiting to, for an opportunity to try out. And I asked the student, hey, you got five extra minutes to try something with me? She said, sure. And this is also a, a UPA blog post. Uh, we can post a link to it later on. Um, it was a best in show 2018. Uh, uh, boom. So this photo says this professor's research. This photo says research. What kind of research? Many kinds. Who's doing the research? Anyone? What you know? It, this is this photo is good indefinitely, and you know again it's been shot in 2018. It's been downloaded within the last 90 days. So a lot of people might say, well, stock photos equals generic photos. I don't like the word generic, so I would say stock photos equal timeless photos. Photos that can be useful next year, the year after that, the year after that, the year after that. That's something. That to kind of go back to answer one of the questions I got earlier, um, what gives me pride in my job is, is why I get a big kick out of seeing photos stand the test of time. And at being around 30 years, uh, I've seen what stand, what's stood the test of time. Um, an example of thinking sort of what would be timeless is, again, with football, the, the running out of the tunnel is a big deal. And Everybody gathers at the front of the tunnel and it's, it's like they're on top of each other and everybody's trying to make pretty much the same picture, which is something like this. But I can look at this picture and I can give you six reasons why this photo is just screamingly dated. Uh, there's Adidas, we're now Under Armour. It's grass, we're now field turf. Uh, number 33, I can't remember his name, but he was a, you know, a very recognizable player at the time. He's graduated, so you're gonna know who he is. And there's just all sorts of cues that say it's of its specific season and it's no longer usable once that season's over. Uh, so in 2017, I thought, well, all right, how can I make a tunnel photo that I've never made before? So a challenge to myself. How can I be where everyone else isn't? And how can I make a photo that will stand the test of time? So I went to the very end of the tunnel, inside the tunnel, the 300 millimeter lens and shot it from behind. And now it's not of any specific player. It's not of any specific season. Uh, and so long as Under Armour remains our sponsor, it's usable. And this has been one of the most used pictures I've made in the last three years. I made this in 2017 and there's 90 days worth of downloads on that photo. That's not quite three years old. 
So the next part of why I do it is, you know, the awards, the applause, the accolades, uh, which kind of come with a bit of a caveat. So what do I mean by the caveat? Well, uh, this photo, which I think was a Mick Beston show in 2014, um, the Blood Moon over the Golden Dome, 2014, October 2014. Uh, perfect timing of the eclipse at moon set in front of the Golden Dome. Um, I don't use any particular app for like photographers, ephemeris or anything like that. Uh, I think I have a uh, moon phases app and then, you know, like if the moon's not lining up with the dome, there's nothing I can do about it. I can't make it line up with the dome. So if it does, it does. If it doesn't, it doesn't. Um, I just know if, you know, when there's going to be a full moon or not. And take my chances. Um, but this, this was a big deal uh, at the time, but then it sort of spawned a little something I wasn't expecting, which was once I photographed the blood moon, then everyone started tweeting at me when there was a harvest moon or a wolf moon or a strawberry moon or a super moon or a pink moon or a super wolf blood moon. And suddenly it became this obligation. Houston, we have a problem. Yes. It became this obligation to photograph every full moon ever. And so suddenly I'm taking a whole lot of moon photos. So um, yeah, just success sometimes has unexpected consequences. Uh, so the, the, the blood moon photo in 2014 meant that I'm shooting a lot of moon photos to this day. So uh, that brings up the whole challenge of repeating myself. <laughs> One of my favorite Instagram follows is called Insta Repeat, where they arguably kind of mock people for shooting the exact same vantage point or the exact same scene or the exact same concept. Uh, and, and maybe they do or don't know that it's not original, but uh, Insta Repeat is quick to point out that, yeah, it's not original. So finding an original way to photograph the same campus after 30 years is a big challenge. And so I do repeat myself, uh, sunrise over our lake, mm -hmm. yep, yep. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yep. So I guess I'll just say my favorite U2 song of all time is Bad off of uh, Unforgettable Fire. Um, just so happens that basically the, the, the same notes and, and meter are, of Bad are also running to stand still and also All I Want Is You. But I think those are good songs too. So I don't enjoy bad less because they made it twice more, nor do I enjoy either of those other two songs less because they were just variations on the song bad. So I've sort of gotten comfortable with the fact that it's okay to shoot the sunrise over and over and over again. Um, yeah, the, there's one particular vantage point of our dome that, yep, yeah, um, when it snows, yep, yeah, that's where I'm gonna go. I'm gonna shoot it every year and that's okay because people that saw that photo in 2010 probably mostly aren't the same people who are seeing it in 2018. So that's okay. Um, our main avenue, it's kind of ideally suited to frame the dome for a photo. So yeah, I shoot that vantage point a lot. Uh, but there's four seasons, there's different weather, there's different times of day. And, and so every photo is gonna be a little bit different even though it's mainly the same thing. Um, probably the people who saw this photo in 2015 aren't going to remember or care when I shoot it again in 2020. Um, this was one of my photo of the day pictures uh, about a week or so ago. Uh, Good Friday, actually. So this is another one of my photo of the day pictures. Um, so this speaks to a couple of things. One, the challenge of making something different. Uh, hey, there's dew on the grass. Hey, it's big dew drops. Hey, I can see the main building in the dew drop. Let's try and work this a little. Uh, so the challenge of making a photo I've never made before, and then the advantage of having an audience with whom the main building is an instantly recognizable thing. So even though it's really tiny in that drop, and if you don't know the main building 
you might not catch it right away. It might not read as quickly if you're not a Notre Dame student or faculty or alum or fan in some way. Uh, you know, I have the advantage of when I tweet out this photo, I am speaking to Notre Dame students and alums and fans. And so they're instantly going to recognize that. And so that's when, when I can make a photo like this, it takes away all the frustration of taking a sunrise photo and going, well, that's my 74th photo from this spot. And it, and it makes it all worth it. So I'm going to end before we take more questions on a story of what by my own social media metrics is my most popular photo. And it sort of tie together all the sort of OCD and the magic and all of this. Um, and it's sort of funny in that the most popular photo I've ever made, according to my own social media, is a photo of an empty stadium, completely empty. Uh, every year, Notre Dame plays its final football game in California over Thanksgiving weekend. So it's an away game and campus is empty. And in 2018, they were undefeated in the regular season. Um, and throughout that season, the people who operate the scoreboard in Notre Dame Stadium had put the team's record on, the, on the, uh, the big screen so that when the team plane flew back to South Bend Airport, they could fly over the stadium, they would see it on the big screen, and it became kind of a thing. And so I knew that would happen if they won at USC, which is their, their last game that year. And I knew there would be this exuberance surrounding an undefeated regular season and I knew that students wouldn't be on campus to share it. If they were on campus, they might go out to one of the spots and have a little pep rally or something. They might do something. So I'm watching the game. I see Notre Dame's going to win. And I know that this is going to go on the scoreboard. And so 11.55 PM on the Saturday of Thanksgiving weekend, zip over the stadium, hop in, make this picture, tweet it. And yeah, my most popular photo I've ever tweeted because again, the confluence Light, not so much, but the season, football season, the subject matter, and, and the audience, aka the magic. So that's all I have. Ready to take any questions. Oh, wonderful. Well, that, that was great, man. There is a lot of questions. <laughs> so first of all, before I jump into the questions, I just want to let you guys know that we are actually going to have a presentation specifically on Libris and Photo Shelter in the next couple of weeks. So I'm only going to jump into a few of the questions because there's so, so many. So just working backwards, uh, Matt, uh, when do you share an image on, on your Twitter versus the school's account posting it? Um, pretty much immediately. Uh, there are, it's, that's a more, I can't give you a quick answer to that. Sometimes there are considerations and things where I might not tweet something. Um, but, uh, uh, I have the discretion and, and the track record that I can, I'm at my discretion to, uh, to do as, as, as common sense and experience, uh, dictates so so far i think it's gone okay how often does a social media manager say hey i just shot your shot from this morning how soon can i get it um self-search self-serve so the social media manager doesn't have to contact me so uh i i i know that you know i try and stay off the other platforms. so i you know i try and keep my notre dame stuff to twitter kind of for that reason I, okay i don't want to we have a social media channel and so i'm uh, you know Twitter was something that just sort of happened long before we ever really thought about social media in a, in a formal way. And so that's just sort of evolved that way. But so I try and leave the, the Instagrams and the Facebooks and the other things uh, to the, uh, to the professionals. So, uh, you know, I'll tweet something and I'll see it later on the, the Notre Dame Instagram account or the Facebook account. And that's fine. So following that up, how quickly are you turning that do shot? Is it going to be up on, on your, on your stock site that day or how quickly yeah, is that was, turning around? Yeah, yeah, it was, it was, it was up within half an hour of making the photo. Um, good, good segue from the do shot. I'm going to jump in, Jaron. Yeah, go ahead. Someone asked about which lens did you use for the do shot and also 
for the lab shot? I'm guessing the same lens. Same one. Yep. If, uh, if people say, do you have a magic spot on campus? No. Do you have a magic lens? Yes. Yes, I do. Uh, it's a 105 millimeter manual focus F28 macro with, it came with like bundled with an extension tube that's just for that lens. I don't know the net model number. I bought it, used it Roberts uh, three or four years ago. And, uh, and, and, and I've gotten two uh, Nick Best of Shows using that lens. So is there a magic lens? Apparently so. It's that one. So following that up, Mark wanted to know if all of your Best of Show photos take five minutes to make. Huh. Yep. <laughs> that's the that's the secret. Five minutes to make and two years to be ready to make them. Yep. There you go. There you go. Um, again, there's just a lot of questions about how your uh, how your stock site. Do you have it so that employees have access? Do students have access to or not? No. Okay, and then there were. Sorry, I'm, I'm just reading through. Um, getting caught up here. So while well, Jaren's looking, Matt, yeah. uh, someone asked about um, unreleased students' photos being sold on Photo Shelter. Uh, you want to touch on that? Fortunately, uh, one, um, most of our print sales um, are campus scenics, so 95% of them. Um, so it just never comes up, fortunately. Um, and then if there is a photo of a recognizable student, it's probably that student, him, him or herself, or their family. And so they're thrilled to have that recognizable person in a photo. Uh, so again, in 30 years, I am not aware of any issues, not aware of, that doesn't mean there weren't any, but I'm not aware of them, um, from anyone who is photographed uh, in, in a candid photo, um, uh, that the photo, went, the photo being shared publicly. Uh, and, and I think it's important to the distinction, Matt is private private property campus, it's a private university that, that does change, we have right. the same issue here at BYU, we have right. a lot more freedom, because yep. when Worth students are on campus, they're on a private property. Worth reiterating. Yep. I'll say it again. Yep. As Jaren said. Um, are all the photos available on self-search or is it just specific campus stock photos that are available for everybody to search through? Um, so that's something we're, we're actually thinking in this pause. Uh, we're sort of doing what I call a, a dam overhaul, digital asset management overhaul uh, and, and thinking about how we curate. So the short answer is no, not all the photos we make are made publicly available. Um, they, what we choose to make publicly available or not, we have two staff photographers and we use a, you know, used a, uh, a cadre of freelancers. And uh, so what we make public or not is sort of a day-to-day -day discretion call. Um, and so we're thinking about that during this pause, maybe in a more formal way about what may or may not be uh, public, but, um, but uh, it's, it's, a, it's a judgment call on, on, on the part of, uh, mostly on the part of each individual photographer. I was just following that up with, are, are you doing more digital downloads or are you doing more print sales? And is that changing over time? Digital downloads as far as a retail product? Um, yeah. We don't offer that uh, out of concern over uh, maybe stepping on some licensing toes, so it's prints only. Um, we do do licensing uh, as far as uh, maybe a, you know, a, a calendar company that's approved and vetted, they might want to license photos for a calendar or um, another licensing opportunity we have is, is we have a, had a lot of construction on campus. Um, and uh, construction companies want to use photos of the buildings they worked on for annual reports and marketing materials. And we have photos during the whole construction process. And, and so that, that's been an opportunity. Uh, but uh, as far as personal use, it's prints only. Okay. What are the, generally speaking, what are the most downloaded images and what are the most printed prints? 
what are the those images that are just the best sellers or the best? Yeah, so Stat Nerd. Um, I use Google Analytics a lot, and uh, you know, I can I can tell you I, I don't want to go digging through my computer at the moment. Um, I can tell you that uh, always, 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 always our top three search terms: dome, football, grotto. The grotto is a is a spot on campus that you saw in a couple of the scenics I shared early on. Um, so our number one best seller print ever was uh, Manti Teo in 2012. Our number one best selling print consistently. Um, so maybe not in total volume, but just never stops being sold is a photo I made of our grotto at Christmas in 2004. So a 16 year old image that continues to, uh, to sell prints. And so long as the grotto's still there and the dome's still there, that photo is still, it's not going to look any different today than it did 16 years ago. And that's been pretty consistent then. Yeah. And for the most part, um, I would also add that football game action photos don't sell. Yeah. Uh, again, the, the value of even... I can think of a couple of very, very, very celebrated game action moments of the last, well, 13 years since we've had, you know, uh, a photo site. And they don't matter the next year. It's a new season, uh, a new team. And in, in, in one case, the player transferred. And so nobody even wanted to remember that he was even a player. Um, and what, as far as football imagery, what, what sells are sort of the, the iconic photos. I, 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 I thinking of you know anything that the, the a football helmet, just just a helmet held up in the air, or a, a, an overall shot of the stadium, or aerial of the stadium, or or something that just says, you know, capital F football, uh, and and not any specific player. Player. Um, I love your point you made about how much time your stock gallery saves you and all those emails that are miscellaneous emails that just are easily dealt with by, by you having this available. What advice do you have for those photographers at universities that don't have anything like that set up and what, where should they start? Set it up. Um, and the only thing I know is photo shelter, because again, I had a personal photo shelter account. I was, one of the first, if not the first university to open a photo shelter account. Um, it's the only thing I know. Uh, so I, I, I don't know if Flickr or I don't even know if they're in business. I, I don't know what else out there does similar things. Um, I'm, I'm as part of the damn overhaul. I'm, I'm reading Peter Crow's damn 3.0 book. So uh, I suggest everyone read that. I'm sure he has suggestions. Uh, uh, I think you mentioned he, he works with a company now that does something have, similar to what Photoshop does. We've got a question from Ron. Uh, what do you use to orga or organize or sort through your archive photos just within your department? Is it separate from Photo Shelter? Um, no. So you find certain images easily. Yeah. Um, no. Uh, so we, uh, we have we try to do the three, two, one backup, you know, uh, the, the, um, a server for sort of the, the huge archive and then the redundantly on, on, on separate external disks. Um, if, if, for instance, in the unlikely event, uh, somebody were to say, hey, this event from 2013 that you have, of which you have seven photos on photos.nd.edu, we need to see everything you shot that day. Uh, we may or may not have the entire take somewhere else available um, on photo shelter that we can access easily. But if we don't, we can easily by using the date, go back in our archive and within minutes be looking at the entire raw take uh, anytime anybody wants, but uh, um, that almost never happens. For your personal workflow, just to call and rename and everything you're using photo mechanic. Yep. Photo mechanic. That's photo mechanic is my right hand photo shelter is my left. Good. Um, so when it basically for other people in your, that are in your office or your department that are using photos, you, they're just been getting them off of the photo shelter site. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Um, what about 
I did have a question about print resales of, of NCAA athletes. Um, again, it just doesn't happen. Uh, people don't buy photos of athletes. They buy photos of venues. They buy photos of helmets. They buy photos of dome. I mean, when, you know, it, it, it's kind of funny when the football team does well, we sell more photos of the dome. So, you know, it, it, our, our print sales are somewhat connected to athletic success, but the photos we sell aren't athletics photos necessarily. Um, so yeah, photos of NCAA athletes, just not a problem because it simply doesn't happen. Yeah, and I, I know that that's a, a topic that comes up a lot. I, you know, the university itself can sell images of current athletes. I don't know if there has been a change. Uh, Fred, you were asking about that. I, I, as far as I know, that's still the case as long as the institution itself and you can, or they can authorize a third party, but then they have to have follow certain rules. Uh, we, we do offer uh, sales of prints of NCAA current athletes, but I would just back up what Matt says. Nobody's buying them. The, the, the stuff that sells is the stadium, the overalls, the details of the helmet, the stuff that's timeless. Just like what Matt was saying, that is, that's what people want on their walls. It's very rare that it's a certain moment. It's, it's more the, the emotion of, of their affinity to the team. I guess I would back up and, and acknowledge that, you know, 10 minutes ago, I said our best selling print ever was Manti Teo. So yes, uh, we, you know, a recognizable student athlete. Yes, that, that, that was the case where we very much did sell prints of a recognizable student athlete. And, and but believe me, if it were a problem, we would have been told by someone it was a problem. So yeah. uh, at least in 2012, that, that it was above board. And I believe it to be the case still that the institution uh, is able to, uh, sell prints of, of its own athletes. Uh, Following up on an earlier question, uh, I know a lot of universities don't have stock. Um, what would the argument be for these university photographers to go to their bosses and say, this is why it's important for us to have some of these stock offerings? Um, the time savings. If you, can, if you can not have to uh, you know, I, I think of like, somebody who needs just a, a pretty campus scenic for the cover of their whatever it is, and they're putting it together in February, which is probably the least scenic month around here. Uh, we call it permacloud. It's, it's gray. Uh, it's, the sun shines maybe once out of 30 days. Probably more than that, but it feels like once. Um, and, and so, you know, good luck commissioning a beautiful campus scenic at the time you need it. Uh, so having, having a stock of campus photos at the ready means that you'll always have sort of the cream of the crop, the, the best representation of your campus available whenever anybody needs it, um, rather than hoping you can uh, make something that, that fulfills that need in the moment. Good. Uh, just wrapping it up here, if anybody has any more questions, you have just a minute. Um, also, if you have suggestions for future uh, topics you guys would like us to cover with UPAA Live, this is this is a good place to put those questions. Uh, we intend on having these webinars, these UPA Live sessions, all the way through till June. Uh, something that we were going to do leading up to symposium, but obviously with symposium uh, changes, uh, this has been very helpful for us to be able to cover some of the topics that we intended to cover at symposium. So if you have any questions or any suggestions, you can either put them here or send me an email. We'd love to take care of those. But Matt, it looks like, uh, looks like we're wrapping up here. We're, thank you so much for sharing this. I think there's a lot of inspiration, a lot of great ideas for us to take back to our campuses. Anything you'd like to, to wrap up with? Everybody, uh, best wishes for uh, your safety and, and health of you and, and your families.